Okay. Welcome once again. I hope this is working. Uh, if anybody's watching, I know it's really late. And so I take my headphones off because I can hear you without doing that. And I can't hear you with them on, which makes no sense. So in this, uh, in this, this is day two. I'm getting my head straight because it's way later than I normally would do it. I had work meetings leading right up to this very moment. And I'm super excited because yesterday's beer, if you didn't see it, was by Whiplash out of Dublin. It was a was a cup French toast maple stout, imperial stout, 11%. So if that's what's coming in this day two of the advent calendar, I'm pretty excited. I mean, if you didn't catch the picture of the advent calendar, I will actually share my screen. You can you can see it. You can take a quick look at where I bought it. There we go. Hold on. I put the right screen up before I even get started. Let's add this in and take a look at that. So that is, of course, it's sold out. It's already, even if you hadn't sold them all, you'd say it was sold out, right? And um, yeah, it was 109 pounds. Forget it. I, if you want to see how I got... Oh, I made that a good deal. You can check out yesterday's episode. But this is awesome. And I've done number one. You can see it just up there. I don't know where... Oh, I'm getting a sneak preview. Two is there. Okay, good. So now I can have to hunt for it when I go outside and look at it. But yeah, it was it was extremely good beer. And I'm pretty excited about the second one. What's even more exciting is that I heard a fellow brew tuber was also doing an advent calendar today. I was pretty happy with it. So I looked him up. Well, I just went, I didn't have to look them up. I just went to the YouTube. This is my YouTube. You can see the things I'm into. I better make sure it's not embarrassing. So there it is there. There's Fermented Friends. This is Fermented Nerds. This was his Advent Calendar Day 2, 20 minutes. But he just did, just before this one. And I haven't been able to watch it yet because I was on a work call. Work. Go figure. But that's going to be what I'm going to review right after this. So check him out. Subscribe to him. He's uh, He's a cool guy. All right, getting back to the, uh, the the calendar. Now I'm excited. I don't know what I'm gonna what it's gonna be. I'm gonna close this down briefly. Unshare it. Oh, I get so confused because the mouse is over there, but it's also here. I'm gonna unshare that and go back to bake, and then we're gonna go to the beer cam. This malfunctioned significantly yesterday. Uh, hello, Mercy Beers. Welcome. I'm gonna try again, and you're gonna go. I'm gonna the the. It lives outside where it's cool, and it doesn't need refrigeration. So let's see what we got. So let's add this to the stream. Beer cam, beer cam. All right, slightly slightly behind. Technology, you can't get good tech these days. Let's go now. Okay, we are back and I can kill the other camera. Check that out. It is, what is it? Oh, there. Oh, it's from Crack. So that's Italian. Let's go back to full screen. And this is another Honest Brew. So there's a theme. Yesterday's was, can I back this out so you can see? And these kill us lights, you can read it. Taste of Tomorrow. Wow, it really adjusts the light, doesn't it? There it is. Taste of Tomorrow. Yesterday's was Taste of Tomorrow as well. And that's crack again. So this is a double dry hop grape IPA. That's weird. I wonder if you can read this in so can I. There we go. The Taste of Tomorrow. The future was set in a flask on our grandparents' kitchen table all along, providing energy, working in the field. It's a tradition that has come full circle as we focus on locality. Our DDH grape IPA blends the deep aromatic Oh, Moscato grit. I can't even say that. Gallo wine, let's assume that. Vine, the help fuel our region's workforce. The fruity flavors of mosaic, citrus, strata, a, hey. and some Nelson Sauvin hops. So we're going to get some, well, Nelson Sauvin is named that because it's have a, a white wine kind of flavor, right? Like Sauvignon. 
And Strata's got a little bit of a, uh, hmm, interesting, let's say. And Mosaic and Citra are giving me citrusy, so should be really good. But crack. So you got it. You seeing as they came up and they're Italian and they have a lot of good beers. Let me show you something from them, which I you're going to get a giggle out of. Let's bring this back up. Uh, I need a new tab. Crack. I, I went there. Oh no. Crack Brewery. Are they going to come? There we go. Good. That was quick. Oh, better yet. Better yet. Let's go right to the shop. Is it on full screen? Okay. Oh, there it is. The, did you see it? The F2020 beer? Come on. Who doesn't want to order that beer? That's a New Year's Eve beer if I ever saw one. That's amazing. Okay. So... Now that we've got a, an introduction to Crack Brewery and their sense of humor, and they're based in Italy. Where in Italy are they? I don't know that. They are in, ah, Cabo d'Arsego, if you know where that is. Probably not going to help you if you don't. doesn't matter. Let's bring this back up. Let's try it out. I've got a very weird glass today. Uh, little bit me. All right, we're back. Let's get our beer. Oh, Fermented Nerds. I just plugged you. Did you catch it, Fermented Nerds? I just gave you a big fat plug. And if you didn't catch it the first time around, go go check out Fermented Nerds on YouTube. There we go. So. All right. So this. And yes, I've been told that previous great IPAs have existed, and, and but in a sour form, right? I think I've had that one. I didn't really like it. I'm not a big sour guy, but I don't, I can already tell you this is not a sour beer. And I apologize for the glass because just before I went to do grab a glass, uh, my wonderful wife, who's very supportive of all my beard goings on, put the dishwasher on. And so the glasses I would normally use, which hadn't been washed in an embarrassing amount of time, uh, are in there. So we have a jar. How about that? Let's dump it in there. It's still got good visibility. Classic uh, mason jar. Brought this from Canada when I moved here. All right, that's enough. All right, check that out. It's foggy. Does it say it has any of the traditional fog ingredients in the adjunct list? And I have no lighting on this at all. I don't see it. All right. Well, we're just going to assume that it's got... Because it's got that sort of New England IPA kind of feel to it. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. It smells amazing. Off to a flying start. It's 7.5%. I just caught that. I didn't mention. I like that there's a series. So they're, they're on a theme with Tastes of Tomorrow. Unless they're all Tastes of Tomorrow. But I'll find out in 24 days if this is a consistent thing. Well, it doesn't have a long finish. I kind of expected a more aggressive bitter. I didn't get that, but I got I got a real funk in the so I got let's let me get it get down to it. So it's like dried pineapple. You ever get dried pineapple? Not like we can get dried bananas, but not like fresh pineapple. Like dried pineapple, a little bit of chewing on limes, like uh, zest, and it's dank. I was kind of expecting that, uh, and it's 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 got a it's got a dankness to it, which is not crazy, but kind of nice. It's, it gives it sort of this feel sweetness. I'll try again. Am I getting great, though? Okay. I'm getting more into the second sip. I judge too hastily sometimes on the way it tastes. And some flavors hit you and just bowl you over, right? And then you get the second sip, and you've normalized that a little bit. And you really catch some of the nuance of it. 
So it has a really low, funky underlying bitter, which has a bit of a dankness to it. But on the top end, it does have a really grassy, earthy white wine th thing going on. Not a gooseberry, not even close, not your Sauv Blancs. Nope, miles away from that. More like an oaky Chardonnay. And then it has the nice citrus and lime and pineapple of an IPA. Last sip before we score. Oh ho. Somebody who I might know seems to be on the uh, the chit chat. Nancy Moore from Ottawa, another Canadian uh, Wally is, uh, is in the chat. So summarizing, this is, does it have an actual name other than double dry hopped grape IPA at 7.5%? It can't be called Tastes of Tomorrow because the, yesterday's beer also had that mark on it. Nope, we're just going to go with the crack, crack. Tastes of Tomorrow double dry hopped grape IPA. We're just going to assume that's what it's called. It's got nice purple fancy pants art on it with a bunch of globes and weird whatever those things are there. I don't know what that is. Uh, it's good. So I'm going to go pretty bland on the art. Attention-seeking colors, but not really following through. I probably would pay attention to it if it was on a shelf, but it's okay. It's okay. I'm not, I'm not bowling over by it. So I'm going to give it a six on art and packaging. I'm going to put it down. Is it unique? Yes, it's a four for uniqueness, but it's only going to get a three on accuracy because while it is a double dry hopped IPA, I really, it doesn't leap out of me as like a grape um, wine, Italian wine, maybe a French wine, but not an Italian wine. So maybe I'm being picky there, but if you consider yesterday's French toast stout, it set a high bar for accuracy and uniqueness, right? So that's a seven. So seven plus a six, we're at 13. And do I like it? I actually, I really like it. It's pretty good. I got the the Dankosaurus uh, the other day. Um, this isn't there, which this is about right. This is that little bit of kind of niceness, white wineness. It's a pretty interesting combination of hops with Nelson Sauvignon, Strata, Mosaic, and Citra, like all together. I don't know that I get a lot of beers that have that. And the whole white wine edge, it's kind of cool. And I'm going to give... I'm going to give marketing props for the uh, the F2020 beer that they've that they've introduced because I just it just me I only saw that I don't know last week or something somebody told me about it and inspirational so I'm probably going to give them an eight and that's because of 21 okay not the 25 we did yesterday maybe but pretty good pretty happy we started really strong so we're going to normalize as we uh, go through these 24 days of beers. So that's going to be a three and a half on untapped. Very cool. Uh, all right. I'm going to, I'm going to sign off now and thank everybody for coming and watching. It's been pretty cool. I'm going to do the usual the YouTube nonsense that says, please tell friends about this. Please subscribe to the channel. Please click below. And uh, where's that? There. It is. Subscribe to the channel. Click the thumbs up. Do bells tell you more most importantly though, spread the word. Tell your friends about it. And seeing as Wally's on the uh on, on the channel, check out my co brute beer tuber, Wally. He's Canadian, he's in Lethbridge. He's like five thousand miles away, but we're bonding over beer at, at nine almost nine o'clock at night for me. So that's very cool. You can meet th friends through beer. My name is Steve Jaguer. I didn't even introduce that yet. This is Beer Native. Keep drinking. Awesome beer.